Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank thee for this day, for this Congress. Lord, I pray for the young people in this session. Lord, that you would have your will and way, God, in, in, a, in their lives as they yield to you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this class, guys, is, <clears throat> is it my responsibility to evangelize the world? And the answer is what I have on the board. His mission is our mission. And we're going to start in the book of Genesis just for a few minutes and go all the way to the book of Revelation. And we're going to discover from God's word, God's mission. I want you to see the big picture. There were three men at a construction site laying blocks one day. The owner came up and they didn't know that. And he asked the first one, what are you doing? And the man said, I'm laying blocks. He asked the second person, hey, what are you doing? And he said, I'm building a wall. And he asked the third person, what are you doing? And he said, we're building a big temple here. One man had a big view. His answer was the complete answer. And if we're going to begin anywhere, we need to begin with God. And when we begin with God, we're going to realize that God is on a mission. So let's look at a few verses here. Starting in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, we see that Adam and Eve are to spread the image of God and subdue the earth with God's culture. You see, God made Adam and Eve in his own image as a reflection of God upon them. And God says in this verse, it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And so it says, and replenish the earth. So immediately we understand that God has always had a purpose for the whole earth. And God's purpose was to work through Adam and Eve to accomplish his purpose. So we have God, we have his purpose, it's a global purpose, and he's working through Adam and Eve. But we know that sin entered into the world when Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And we come to Genesis 12, we see this man named Abraham. And in this covenant, uh, this pact, uh, this promise God made to uh, Abraham, unconditional, was more than just a blessing upon Israel that would come from the family, from this man, that would be birthed into a nation, but it was for the whole earth. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis 12, 1 through 4, at the end it says, and, in, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So we again see what? We see God on a mission through his people for the whole world. God's on a global mission through his people. Deuteronomy 28.10, we realize a little bit more about that purpose when the Bible teaches that Israel held a place of witness among the nations. It says, And all people of the earth shall see that they are called by the name of the Lord. Again, we see how God used this nation of Israel for God's global purpose. And then in Exodus 7, 16 through 17, if you know your Bible, when uh, the nation of Israel uh, went to Egypt before Joseph died, they were there for about 100 and 430 years, and God sent the plagues on Egypt to bring them out of Egypt. The purpose of these plagues, it says in Exodus 7, 16 through 17, was to reveal the true God. It says, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And so we realize again that God is on a purpose to reveal himself in this world, and he was using Israel to do that. And then in 1 Samuel 17, 46, here's Goli David out in the Valley of Elah, and who's he fighting? That giant Goliath, and he's confronting him, he's responding to him, and this is what he says. He says, This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the field. Notice what it says, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. 1 Samuel 17, 46. You see, God has his people Israel working through them globally. All right? That the whole earth may know. Not just Israel, but the whole earth. 1 Chronicles 16, 31 
when Israel worshipped God, it was a call to all nations to worship God as well. It says, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. and Let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. So even when the nation of Israel worshipped God, they were calling all other nations and people to come and worship God. In 2 Chronicles 6, 32-33, when Solomon built the temple after King David died, his son Solomon was charged with this responsibility. And now after the temple was built, he's going to dedicate the temple. He's going to pray and listen to this prayer. In this prayer here in the middle of the prayer, he says this, Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people on the earth may know thy name. Where did David get this idea that the whole earth may know and where did Solomon get this idea that the whole earth and where did the nation of Israel get this idea that when they worshiped God that the whole earth should be worshiping as well they got that because God revealed his purpose to them and which the same purpose God had even in Genesis a global purpose working through his people for his glory in the whole earth Psalm 2 7 through 8 God decrees his eternal son as ruler of the whole earth he says, I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son this day, have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the, uh, and the other, uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. God has a global plan. Do you see that? Everywhere in the world, God has a purpose, and that purpose is for him to be reveal, revealed, for him to be glorified. And how does he accomplish that purpose? He's working through his people. Psalm 22, 27 through 28, we have a promise of the Messiah who's Christ uh, and he would be reigning and that he would be globally worshipped. It says, All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship him. Psalm 46, 10, it says the same thing. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen I will be exalted in the earth. Then again, Psalm 72, 17. This is a desire of the prayer of the psalmist for God's global purpose. He says this, His name shall endure forever. His name shall, be, shall continue as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Isaiah 2, 3, we come to prophecy now in God's word. And there's hope for the nation of Israel and the very fact that God's purpose is for the, him to be globally worshipped. It says in Isaiah 2, 2 through 3, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Now the word nations just isn't talking about countries. It's talking about ethnic groups, people groups. There's about 16,000 uh, uh, 16, uh, or more people groups in the world today. Okay, Isaiah 28, 24, 16, another prop prophecy that God's global purpose will not be stopped. It says, from the uttermost parts of the earth have we heard songs. Do you realize that people will be worshiping God globally? That he will be exalted in the whole world. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. It's a prophecy of the nations coming to Christ the Messiah. It says, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Jeremiah 3 17. Again, the prophecy of the global recognition of the Lord. When it says, All the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord. Jeremiah 16 19. Uh, a completed global adoration of the Lord. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth. When the Bible says Gentiles, it's talking about all nations that are not Jews. And so he's talking about all the nations coming to God. Micah 4, 2, and many nations shall come. We see the prophecy of many peoples coming to worship the Lord. Micah 5, 4, another Prophecy of the global recognition of the glory of God when it says at the end, For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Habakkuk 2.14. Listen to this. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. 
Zephaniah 2.11, another prophecy that the people that live on the islands of the world will also worship God and come to him. It says, The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Okay? And then Zechariah 2.11 it's a prophecy that many nations will become my people. You see, the nation of Israel, they would easily say, hey, we are the people of God. But here we have a prophecy that God is going to include every uh, part of humanity as his people. It says, and many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of them. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. Malachi 1.11 is also the pro a prophecy of the global worship of God. It says, For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, the name, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, among the nations. That's the Old Testament. Just a little snapshot. We went through those verses very quickly. What did we learn from those verses? Does God have a mission? Yes. Is God trying to reveal himself to the whole world? Yes. Does he want the whole world to worship him? Yes. Does he expect his glory to fill the whole earth? Yes. Let's go to the New Testament. In Matthew 6, 9 through 10, Jesus' name will be honored by men when we look at the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the gospel will be preached in the world, and the men on the earth will serve the Lord. Because this prayer says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. That means all the earth as it is in heaven. So this prayer is based upon the fact that God has a global plan for his glory and his will to be done in the whole earth. Matthew 10, 18 is a testimony given before Gentiles for Jesus' sake. It says, and so these disciples were going to have to go. And it says, for testimony against them and the Gentiles. And so God is saying, I'm sending these disciples out to the Gentiles. What are we beginning to see? Now we understand that God, Jesus is, is, is going to start his church in embryonic form in Matthew chapter 16. That's when Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And so we realize that as Christ started his church, he began to have a purpose for his church. The purpose for his church was his purpose that he's always had in the Old Testament, which is that he will be made known. And then he's doing that through his church today as we go out and obey him and preach the gospel. And so we look here at another verse, Matthew 24, 14. God's purpose is that all nations hear the gospel. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Mark eleven seventeen says God's purpose in all nations teaches that God's purpose in all nations is for worship to worship him. It says, and he taught, saying unto them, is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations, the house of prayer? See, that's the prayer that Solomon made <laughs> when the temple was built. And Jesus continues that same purpose. Why? Because God's purpose hasn't changed. God is still on purpose for the, everyone to know him and for them to worship him and for him to be glorified. Luke 2, 30 through 32, we see that salvation is a light for the Gentiles, all nations. It says, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Luke 10, 2, God's purpose involves laborers. It gets more clear in this verse. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. And now God is saying, Don't forget this one thing. Just like I wanted to use Adam and Eve before sin came in for a global purpose, for, my other, uh, for, my, for worship of me and for my glory to fill the earth. Now I want you to know I'm praying. I want you to pray that I would send forth these laborers. Because they will go to places where people do not know me. They will go to places that are where there's idol worshipers. They will go to places now where there's darkness. And they're to take the light. And they're to tell about the one and true God. So they know who he is and worship him and glorify him. That's God's purpose. It's still going on today. Jesus' death 
fulfills the plan of nations coming as part of fulfilling the plan of all nations coming to God. It says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, which means if I die, I pay for the sin debt of the world, I will draw all men, all men unto me. And so we realize that's part of God's plan for his eternal purpose. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, God's global purpose is through the church. Today, God is working through his church. It's so clear in this great commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach what? All nations. Where did that come from? Is that something new that God came up with, all nations? Go all the way back to Genesis, all the way through. God said, I want my purpose to be for all nations. But today he's working through his church to all nations. And we are to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16, 15. God's purpose through the church is to every is for every individual. He said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All the world, but every individual. Yes, God's plan is a global plan, but it's going to start when you personally deal with one individual. Okay, that's a big point for us. Who are we to reach with the gospel? The person who is closest to us that needs Christ. We are to start preaching the gospel where we are to our friends, to our family, to our neighborhood. And then we begin to preach the gospel to other people, okay? And then it says in Acts 1a, God's global purpose through his churches is with his enabling. This group of believers went from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the othermost parts of the earth. How? It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. God will enable us to see these things accomplished. Acts 15, 14, God's global mission continues as promised. I like Pastor Simeon here when he said, hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. When it says a people for his name, it's for his glory to be worshipped, to be honored. And so God is working in this world for a people to worship and glorify him and honor him. And he's doing that today with laborers through his churches. Romans 1, 5, Paul understood that the coming of the Gentiles is the completion of what God said he was going to do. See, Paul had the Old Testament. And when Paul saw the gospel going to the Gentiles and God using him to accomplish that, he clearly understood it. It says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. There it is together, globally, all nations for his name, for his glory. So he's saying here, that we need to be obedient to God's purpose because God's purpose is global and God's purpose is for his glory. And everyone needs the gospel message, okay? Romans 10, 12, all nations by faith become one people in Christ. You say, you understand God has his family. The Bible says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is, o- is over all, is rich unto all that call upon him. And then Galatians 3, 8, and 14, all nations are blessed through Jesus Christ. Here we have the New Testament verses that take us back to the Old Testament and show us that God's purpose has always been a universal purpose and for Him to be glorified and worshipped. It says, And the Scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. And then, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Then Revelation 5, 9. We're going to take a long view, guys. We're going to look way into the future. And it says here, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. And hast redeemed us to God. Look what it says. By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. When you get to the book of Revelation, you see that there is a global representation of every nation before the throne of God worshiping Jesus Christ. Isn't that great? 
God's not hiding his purpose from us. Look at Revelation 7, 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Revelation 7, 9. What do we see here? Just some quick conclusions, all right? Number one, God has always been on mission. God has always been on mission. You know, when we think about, is it my responsibility to evangelize the world, to get the gospel to everyone? Let me ask you a question. If you're involved with God's mission, it, that's the truth. But if you came up with your own idea and your own plan, probably not. God has always been on mission. See, we're not supposed to go out and try to find out something new to do for God. God's already working his plan. We need to come and yield to him and get involved with what God is doing. I was a missionary for 14 years in Venezuela. When I went to Venezuela, I didn't go there to start something new. I went there to find out what God was doing because God's already on mission in Venezuela and get involved with what God's doing. No matter where you go in this world or what city you go to in the United States of America, God is working there. And you need to go there and get involved with what God is doing. Right in your local church, God is working. And God wants you to get involved in his mission. God has always been on mission. All right. Number two, God has always been on mission for all people. Listen, it's just not for the Jews. It just wasn't for Adam and Eve. It just wasn't for Abraham. It just wasn't for the nation of Israel. It just isn't for my church. It's for all people. All people. All right? And God has always called, taught, and expected his people to be on mission with him. Do you know what God expects of you guys? God expects you to be involved with what he's doing in this world. It's a global mission for his glory. Now, how is that being accomplished today? Through his church. And through the gospel work that his church is supposed to be doing. To preach the gospel to every creature. To tell others how they can know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Seeing them baptized and teaching them to observe all things. To go, win, baptize, and teach. What does this mean? Oh, listen, churches are not supposed to be an end in themselves. It's just not for you. Do you really think that God has this eternal purpose only for you? And that's it? No, he has it for you and then through you to someone else. God just does it doing his eternal purpose for one local church. That local church should be obedient in getting the gospel out as people seek the Lord and be involved with what he's doing. Is it your responsibility to be involved in God's global mission? As a believer, yes. There's only two options. Be involved with what God's doing or do your own thing. And many times, we just want to do our own thing instead of yielding and being involved with what God's doing through our church. Okay? Church leaders aren't the only ones who are supposed to do this. Oh, well, I thought our pastor was the person who was supposed to go out and be involved in God's work. I thought the youth pastor, that's why we have a youth pastor. Isn't he supposed to just be doing God's work or a Sunday school teacher? No, guys, we all are to be involved. And then, when you read through the Bible, don't ignore God's purpose. I took you through Genesis all the way to Revelation. Very quickly, but we did it. To show you, how can you be a Christian? Say you believe the Bible, read the Bible, and not be involved in God's global work. And not witness and share the gospel. And then... You need to see, if you see a need, you just don't go fill it. You should go to your church and help them fill it. God's doing his work through his church today. So very important lessons we can learn. You say, well, how does this all come together? Notice two things. God is our goal and our task is world evangelism. Many people make our task that we need to go make the goal to go out and tell everybody about Jesus. That's not your goal. 
Our goal is God. God is interested in what? Being worshipped and being glorified. When he has the preeminence in my life, when I yield to him, he has his rightful place in my life. When I really am surrendered and yielded to the Lord and I'm worshiping him, then God uses my life. I'm prepared to be a great witness for him, to share the gospel with others. And I can help other people come to him and to worship him and glorify them with their life. We have God's universal authority. We have world evangelism through local churches as our task. The goal is God's glory and praise as we see it filling the earth. It's to go to every creature and you say, how does this get done? God's presence. God has promised to never leave nor forsake us. You know, God has a purpose here. And God's purpose will be accomplished. Listen to what Charles Spurgeon said. He's a great preacher in England, 19th century. He said, every Christian is either a missionary or or an imposter. What he was saying was every Christian should be involved in God's global work of getting, of evangelizing the world. And if not, then they're not really a true Christian. They're an imposter. They're not really involved in what God is doing. Here's the great verse I want to leave with you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you we've been sent we need a pioneering spirit you need to faith god and to step forward and believe his promises and you will be surprised of what god can do in your life and how he can do it it's amazing to me that one day i went out and passed out some gospel tracks and two weeks later someone knocked on my door in venezuela Help that person. They brought two family members to the church. Both of those people got saved, baptized, and they're both pastoring churches today. One now has turned his church over to another pastor and is traveling as an evangelist and has preached in five or six different countries. You see, you never know what God's going to use your life to accomplish. That's just one little testimony I can share with you. But you'll never know that person that God's bringing across your path, that friend you have, that family member you have, is the person God wants you to reach. And he wants you to understand that that work you're doing through your church, why it's important to attend the services, why it's important to give, why it's important to be involved wholeheartedly, be involved in a gospel ministry and serving the Lord, is because you're working to get the gospel in God's purpose to every creature. Here's the thing. When we worship God as we truly should worship God, we become very jealous for His glory. Does it bother you when you see a place where people are not worshiping God? Does it bother you when you see a rock concert and people are all dressed in black and they have the demonic symbols and you look at it a little strange and you're like, whoa. Does it bother you? You see, when Paul in Acts 17 was in Athens, the Bible says his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. In other words, Paul said, I want the glory of God to fill this city. And when you see the darkness and you see the people without God, if you really have worshipped God and know that God is on this mission for his glory to fill the earth, you will be jealous for God's glory to be there. You'll want his light to be there. You want the gospel to get to those folks. And then you also have a passion to get the gospel to everyone. I want you you to understand something. We should have a burden for the whole world. When you hear about the Chinese people that can't have Bibles, we should be burdened for those people and have a passion for them to hear the gospel. When we hear about South Sudan and the Muslims now and the war that is going on there and the destruction of Christians, we should be burdened for that. When we hear about secularism and atheism growing, as we heard this morning, we should be burdened because people don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. We should have a passion to get the gospel to everyone. And then we should have compassion. We should understand the ignorance of which they are in. Their eyes are blinded by the devil. And they're hopeless and on their way to hell. And we should have compassion to go and share the gospel with them. Let me ask you, the question is, 
Is it my responsibility to evangelize the world? Yes. Yes, you have been commanded to go. God says that the church is here to prepare you for the work, that the pastor of the church is here to prepare you for the work of the ministry. That involves getting the gospel to the whole world. And we ought to understand that we need to yield and be in on God's purpose in this world. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you, is what Jesus Christ said. And that sending just isn't at your house. When you come out of the house, maybe your whole family is saved. But when you come out your house, you need to be jealous for the Lord's glory. You just have passion for your family to be saved or you have a passion for everyone's family to be saved. Do we just show compassion on our family members and pray for our uncles and aunts that aren't saved? Or do we have compassion on the people in our schools? The students there that don't know the truth of Jesus Christ. God wants to use you there. And he wants to use you in a great way for his gospel to go around this world. Does anyone have any questions at all? Any questions? Yes. God has always called, taught, and expected his people to be on mission with him. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? What do firemen do? What else do firemen do? That's what they do. But you go by a firehouse, what are they doing? Washing their trucks, cleaning out their hoses, feeding their dog, fixing up their outfits. But when the alarm sounds, what do they do? Put out a fire. That's their purpose, right? Why aren't we involved in getting the gospel to the whole world? Because we like to clean the trucks, clean the hoses, feed the dogs. We find something good to do instead of doing and getting involved in God's purpose of getting the gospel to the world. Your purpose as a believer is to be involved in God's mission. His mission is our mission. There's a lot of other things we can do that are good things, and sometimes they're necessary to do. But we need to be involved in what God is doing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this class and the time we have together. Lord, I pray that you would encourage these young people to follow you and to be involved in your mission in this world and help them, Lord, not to be sidetracked, sidetracked and whether they're going to be businessmen, whether they're going to be teachers or lawyers or policemen or firemen or be involved in your work in some capacity as full time. Lord, whatever they do, may they always understand that as a Christian, they have this responsibility.